May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So not too long ago, a friend of mine introduced me to a phrase that's uh, really helped me understand the adjustment in our rhythms of life in the midst of these unusual times. It was a Sunday night when we were talking, and we were talking about the disrupted rhythms that we all have to deal with. In fact, we were explicitly talking about the challenges of COVID Sundays and what that meant for both of us. Because he works in the corporate world, Sunday evening was the last gasp of the weekend. It was the day before Mondays kicked off, and since the pandemic has been going on and on and on, there's a pattern for Sundays for him that almost feels normal. He was telling me about his Sunday routine and how it helped. He gets up and he enjoys some quiet time. He has a great cup of coffee and he reads some inspirational literature. Around his TV in his living room, he has a mini altar set up with a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine, and he joins us for worship here at St. Mark's, even though he's miles and miles away. He gives thanks with all of us for this wild and wonderful spiritual communion that we share. Now this particular part is especially meaningful for me because without this internet evangelism, without this current state of our affairs, he wouldn't join us regularly. But then after church, he gets out into the creation. He gets out if the weather holds and goes on a walk or hike or something to help him connect what he's just experienced in worship to his own life in the present moment. So far so good, right? It's a good routine. But he confessed to me that as the day progresses, he gets into what he calls the Sunday scaries. Have you heard that phrase before? The Sunday scaries? The evening comes, the day draws to a close, and anxious worries about the week to come begin to take root. It's such a good phrase. I've experienced it myself, maybe not on Sunday evening, but times when I get too far ahead of myself. I totally understand this concept. Maybe you do too. Maybe you've had the same experience. Heightened worries may not happen on Sunday nights for you, but I think we can all relate to that feeling that shifts from peace and calm, the the feeling of a good weekend, to slightly anxious concerns about Mondays and about new beginnings. Now think about it, Monday has always been kind of uh, an expression of, oh well, time to start over for most of us. Garfield wasn't a fan. The Bengals sang about it as being a manic day of the week. And just a sidebar, Prince actually wrote that song. So when days and weeks begin to run together, we can all relate to the shift from Sunday to Monday. And I thought about that a lot when Jesus makes his way to Capernaum for some weekend teaching. I wonder if if the disciples and people in Capernaum and the Galilee crew ever had to wrestle with their own first century version of the Sunday scaries. In the story today, Jesus is almost immediately received in the synagogue as one who teaches with authority. In fact, Mark's Gospel says, the people heard him teach with this authority and they were astounded. They were astounded. They were astonished and they were amazed. Which, of course, led me to wonder, what did he say that left them so astounded? What kind of authority did he carry with them so much that it it translated into amazement and astonishment? I wonder... I wonder, because in Mark's particular version of the Gospel, authority is repeated over and over again as an identity piece for who Jesus is. It lays the foundation, that authority, for what Jesus does for the world. And twice in this short little story that we have today, the Gospel reminder reminds us that Jesus was one who communicated and cared with authority. Now, another word for authority is power. So Jesus leads with this power that none of them have even seen before. 
It's a new thing. They even hold it up against an old thing just for comparison's sake. It's definitely different than the scribes, they say. Jesus carries this authority, and the people who hear it can't help but be astounded. They're astounded, amazed, and astonished, all because of something new that they experienced with a little bit of power and a little bit of authority. Of all the things that Mark's gospel could have highlighted first, it's the astounding nature of experiencing Jesus' love up close and personal that sets the stage. Now the good news for us is it's the same kind of Jesus' love that we know casts out all fear and casts out all worry. I think authority, for the most part, gets a bad rap in this day and age. I think for many of us, authority is something we resist or question. Authority is something that um, has failed us at times in institutions and structures. We've seen people who have been corrupted by power, and we've probably had our own difficult road of trusting the authority around us. So when we're in that place, that place of, of scariness, It's hard to make room for astounding and astonishing new thoughts. Sunday evening rolls around, and the scaries set in. And it's easy for us to forget about the powerful witness of Jesus' love that changes and challenges us all, no matter what day of the week it is. I thought about examples, about practical things that could remind us of this kind of teaching, this kind of authority, this kind of love, and it didn't take me long to land on one just right up the hill. Our very own living, breathing example of this kind of authority that's found in St. Mark's preschool. Now, for those of you that don't know, we have a preschool, and this year has been challenging to say the least. This is the first year for our new director, Miss Teresa. Yes, you heard me correctly. Her first year in her ministry role as the director of our preschool is in the midst of the COVID crazies. In fact, the entire teaching team is new. Chris Spilker, our beloved director of children and family ministries, has stepped in in some amazingly wonderful new ways to support all these teachers and all these families. And what I've been most impressed by is that they have all, to a person, approached this year with courage and flexibility. And that courage and flexibility with which they've approached this most difficult year has translated into an authority, a power, that's definitely a sight to behold. Now, I also know that they're all human. And I'm sure that all of our teachers, and and perhaps some of our parents too, have dealt with the Sunday scaries when they're getting ready to transition from one week to the next. My particular connection to the preschool always takes place on a Monday morning. It's when I tell a chapel story. It's when I get to see the kids and, and, and hear their joys from their own weekends. And I get the privilege of watching them grow and learn. I also have the privilege of watching Miss Teresa and the gang teach with authority that dispels worry, anxiety, and anything scary that our beloved preschoolers might encounter. I'm using the preschool as an example for us not to make light of those things that are scary or anxious or worrisome or frustrating but to draw attention to the authority of love in that place. The authority of love in all of our important learning relationships and the power that teachers have to share a peace that passes all of our understandings. This past week, I was up at the school reading a chapel story, and I bore witness to this new thing that's taking place up there. Now let me be clear, it's my privilege, it's a privilege that I get to be a part of this community. And it's an absolute joy for me. This group of children in this year's class are funny and thoughtful, they're full of energy, and they're brimming with the wonder that's required of being a three or a four-year-old. 
Maybe because it's the year of COVID, or maybe it's because they spend the majority out, out of their time outside. I think this particular group of young people always has a new way of looking at things. And they are more than happy to tell you about it. They're more than happy to share their experience of what you're teaching. That enthusiasm is limitless, it seems. And their energy is restorative. But one thing I noticed this week, one practical thing I noticed in our beloved Miss Teresa was that whenever she saw a child doing something novel, curious, or wonder-filled, she simply acknowledges that child's expression and tells them, shine on. Shine on, little students. Shine on, little lions. Shine on. One of the reasons that I think our preschool is regarded in this community is because it's built around love and care. It's built around this notion that our love and our care for the youngest among us will expand and grow. It's been true for years at St. Mark's, but I find it to be especially true this year. All of this is a good practical place where we can connect the gospel of our preschool teachers with the good news of Christ Jesus, the teacher, in our own lives. What Teresa, Chris, Amy, and Lily do on a late regular basis is they help tiny humans find joy in curiosity and learning. That joy becomes contagious, and I would say healing for most of us no matter how many years we're removed from a preschool environment. On a very basic level, this preschool is about dispelling the scary in exchange for the authority of love. It's the exact same pattern we see in Mark's gospel today. I think the new teaching that Jesus was using and got such an astonishing response was that he perhaps reminded the people of that synagogue and that community in Capernaum to simply shine on. Shine on in the way you were created to shine. Shine on in the light which breaks into the world through laughter, learning, and joy. Shine on not because you have some kind of ability or special powers, but because it's who you were created to be. Shine on when it's dark and it's scary. Shine on when people have stopped giving you the benefit of the doubt. Shine on. Because you need it, and the world needs it. Shine on because we all need it. Shine on because you're beloved children of a beloved God. I don't imagine that Jesus told the people in the synagogue anything all that different than the stories that they had heard for generations. But I do imagine that he put his emphasis on other places, other ways where these stories, these stories of connection and healing, would reach out and touch the people in his presence. And they couldn't help but respect the authority and be astonished. The idea that God is somehow present in the lives of astounded people in Capernaum and in the stories of our tradition would definitely be enough to warrant a proclamation of a new thing. But it wasn't just the novelty that astounded. It was the healing that took place when you saw it. See, in the midst of this story, you get this young man with an unclean spirit who is made whole again, who is brought back into the community again. And there's a pattern of grace and wonder that transcends synagogues in Capernaum or preschools on Ranch Road 12. Who knows what Jesus actually said or did to offer healing to this young man, but I think we can all agree that it must have been rooted in the radical understanding of love as the power of God. Love as a transformative force. Love that becomes light, that cuts through all darkness and casts out all fear. I think this story becomes for us a practical reminder of people who follow Jesus in those new places. It's practical not because it's a historical reminder of the way that Jesus could heal or the way that Jesus could teach, 
It's practical because it's a story about connection and renewal. It's a story about touching another person's soul, reaching in to that person's life and saying, shine on, blessed child of God. When Jesus teaches his disciples, when Jesus teaches us, he is leading with that wonderful gift of shiny, transformative love. Shine on, he says, in your brokenness and in your disconnected selves. Shine on in your best moments and in your peaceful Sunday mornings. Shine on when you're nervous or worried or don't quite know how you feel. Shine on as a reflection of God's brilliant light in the world that is in each and every one of us. Shine on as inquisitive children and curious and playful students. Shine on, dear ones. Shine on. So if the Sunday scaries or any scaries of any day of the week sneak up on you this, this week, take a breath. Take a breath and listen for the astounding authority of love in your own life and in our midst together and shine on. Amen.